Welcome to Guzzler. This is Guzzler. My name is Louis. That is Alfie, and that is also Declan. Uh, not I swear see, your intros are getting just, worse. They are getting worse, but I like to mix. You didn't up. even say hello this time. You just Welcome went. This is Guzzler. Guzzler. <laughs> it's because last time <laughs> I realised that that Heather says Welcome to Guzzler, and straight after I said Welcome to Guzzler. So this time I'm just going to say I'm Louis. That's smart, that's actually. Alfie, that's Deck. Yeah. Yeah, they can't see us though, so. No, no, they can't. No. So last week, well, t- f- yeah, last week I said that I was going to do this week's about more debates because three weeks ago mm. I don't mind about debates, and I thought I don't really like to do the same thing each time. But I thought, what, what, why change? What's not broken? So I had a little look on the news and things to see what we could debate about, and it was all just quite sad and depressing and quite boring to be honest. There was stuff about like whether we should wear um, wear a mask in school, whether we should have a vaccine passport, and I thought. There's no point talking about that because everyone talked about it already. So we're now allowed to obviously do um, be in the gardens now. Yeah. In groups of six, which is very good. And obviously the weather was good last week, so us three saw each other. Been a lot of barbecues and picnics brought in, in the UK. But I'm asking you, what is the best thing to be in a picnic? Guzzler podcast. Dog. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Where are you To picnicking? be in a picnic? Yeah, like if you had to make the picnic, the picnic. Oh, uh, like... right, okay, cat. <laughs> oh, he understands the yeah. question now. If you had to make the picnic, what would, what would, you know, the definitive answer for a picnic, what what goes in it? The picnic of all picnics. Yeah. You've got some sandwiches, didn't you? Right, sandwiches, excellent answer. Definitely. I just black pudding. <laughs> Nothing but black pudding. Gammon. Just black pudding. Maybe a bit of haggis. What oh. is the difference between haggis and black pudding? And one Scottish. Is that the only difference? That's it. It's Scottish blood, and opposed to haggis is Scottish blood. black pudding. No, yes, yeah, sandwiches. Um, what's what sandwiches? A, um, a yeah, cu- cheese, cheese, sandwich? cheese and cheese and cucumber. I like them. Uh, I like cheese and cucumber. Yeah, that's good. Cucumber, that's good. Ham. Bang. No. No ham sandwich. Tuna. We've all learned that's a good idea. Yeah, no. tuna. <laughs> we established this last week. Egg. Check out last week's episode. <laughs> Egg. Egg sandwich? Egg, yeah. Like fried egg? No. Ooh, I it'd it'd be sandwich. cold by the time you get there. You wouldn't it? take a fried egg sandwich on a picnic, would you? No. You're uh, wrong. Poached, so poached egg sandwich? Poached egg sandwich. No. Mm, num, num. Stop. Right. So we've got our sandwiches. What, what else do you take? <laughs> Hard boiled? Fairy cakes? Crisps? crisps. Veg crisps? Yeah, veg no. crisps. No. Cheese veg balls? Cheese. <laughs> Just cheese balls and veg crisps. Excellent. Some fruit, like Just a fruit salad? Um, sweeties, some sweeties, some some fruit salad. Oh, uh, uh, full fat milk, blue, blue lid, blue lid milk. Mm, yeah. I'm pretty sure no, none of us drink dairy milk, right? We don't. So that would be defeatist. Mm. No, I don't drink milk. No. Well then, <laughs> so not milk. I just, uh, yeah, it's a good point, Dad. I find take a cow the on this picnic and put the milk back into the udder. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna Scott type shares. in what the best picnic is on Google. So I came across the top search was Jamie Oliver's Cat. perfect picnic. I thought you can't get much better than Jamie Oliver. I'd little Google Jamie Oliver. He's worth four hundred million pounds in twenty nineteen. Yeah, but he's a little weirdo, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he got rid of turkey twizzlers and all that, didn't he? I bet he's put like kale in there. Oh, you like... wait, mate. You wait. This is the perfect picnic, I remember though. Perfect picnic. Yeah, he's worth four hundred million pounds in twenty nineteen. He had seventy restaurants. Uh, I think he hasn't got any, any now because I'm sure they all shut down. So that shows how well he's doing. And he started in two thousand six. This man's got a lot of. You know, he's got a lot of uh, experience under his belt. Perfect picnic. Number one, Scotch eggs. Yeah, we said that. Yeah. Number two, pork and apple sausage roll. That's nice. I like, I like that. Right. Number three, potato salad. I also let you know oh, there's no other salad oh, on the list. Coleslaw. I forgot coleslaw. Coleslaw's coleslaw pang. Good, yeah. But potato salad. No other salad, just potato salad. Uh, jam tarts. <laughs> hummus. No. He hasn't got much to dip in his hummus. What's he either. having his hummus with? It just says simple hummus. Uh-huh. Just simple hummus. Um, Turkish couscous. Man. Why? Vegetable why? tartlets, char grilled chicken kebabs, crab with asparagus, flapjack, <laughs> and aubergine dip. It really took a turn there. Yeah, it did yeah. It got worse. Crab with asparagus, flapjack, and aubergine. It started dip. out quite normal, to be honest. It sounds got... like one of the shitty meals at his shitty restaurants. <laughs> He's got a lot of dip, but nothing to dip in the dip. Yeah, too much dip. Perfect picnic in in his eyes. That's the number one thing on um. On Google, when you type in things, that yeah, you but that's picnic. that's just his favourite food. That's not a objective measure. But he ain't got a sandwich. He ain't got a sandwich. No, just lots of dip, mate. Just lots and lots. He's of wrong dip. then, isn't he? Just a lot of dip. I also thought about a lot of barbecues have been brought in the last weekend, especially being Bank Holiday weekend. And it, why is it that men stereotypically, also statistically, 
and uh, less men cook in the kitchen than women do. Seventy-two uh, percent of women in a heterosexual relationship cook nightly. Seventy-two percent. That's quite a high statistic. So men is quite low down. But when it comes to barbecues, why? Do, why are men like? Why is the barbecue the men's thing? Why is it like the, all the men mm. crowd around the barbecue? But what's the difference between the outside cooking and the inside cooking? So that is actually a question I'm asking you. Not you a know, clue, mate. The four walls is the biggest difference I could say. <laughs> Naked flame. So it just feels manly, doesn't it? It's just it's fire. It's just a vibe. And meat. It's just a vibe. We often have several barbecues around yours deck in the, in the summer, and yeah, the, yeah. the men all just sit around the barbecue, just like... I'm pretty sure I sit at the barbecue. Yeah. But then, conversely, me and you also do the cooking when we, when we get together. We do, so. So, so that should mean that our girlfriends should do the barbecue. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, I genuinely think it is just literally just like... They're seen as manly. There's meat, fire. You just have a beer, and it's just it's just a manly I, thing. I, I, I think it, it's purely cultural. Like it's, it's just, just a thing that people do, isn't it? It's just, it just yeah. happened. It, it's like World War Two family and a nuclear family. There was all the adverts for like barbecues. Mm. There was always the man yeah. standing at the barbecue, and I think it's just derived from that. That is weird, isn't it? Why that? Why I think it's weird. also like a comes from like a um, women. Women are seen as the cookers. The cookers, yeah, <laughs> the ovens. Because men are at work. The woman, the woman should cook, make the dinner for the man for when he gets home. Mm. Whereas a barbecue is a family occasion, and the man's there. Ah. Like genuinely, I think it is literally just like, oh, now it's a family thing. The man's here; he can cook now. Whereas when the man's at work, the woman cooks. That's mm. good. So it's a bit of a messed up system, to be honest with you. That's but we good. knew that. But so out of all the out of all the inequalities we have, I'd, I'd say this is quite. Low down on the list. I think it's my my top priority. Yeah, actually. That's my top priority as well. Yeah, get more women at the barbecue. Um, ev- yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I see a man, every time I see a man at a barbecue, I, I make sure I kick the barbecue over. Yes. Yeah. So then I had a little Google and I thought, I wonder if Jamie Oliver's put the best things to put on the barbecue. Yeah. Oh had, no. But what he had done? Char grilled chicken skewers. Char grilled chicken. Ch- 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 yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah. He hadn't, but what he had done was put his top 10 tips for the best barbecue. And I thought, top 10 tips? I don't know what the top 10 tips could be, um, but you two who aren't celebrity chefs worth £400 million, what is your tip? Top tip for the barbecue? Yeah. Go on, what's your top 10 tips? Not 10, but what are your top tips? We're talking about disposable barbecues I've only, or barbecue. I've only got either, one. Either or. Because we only do disposables. We do only do disposables, yeah. So what, what are your top tips then? I'd argue my actual top tip is to make sure... You light it and then let the flames die down and let the coals go white. So I think people literally just light them. As soon as there's a flame, whack the meat on, mate. Uh, Awful yeah, idea. Tip. Declan, what's your My tip? other tip, oh, I on. actually have tips here. Yeah, go on. Cook the fatty stuff first to like start it off. You want to cook like sausages or burgers first so that the fat drips down and, and gets it all going. You don't want to do like chicken or something, like, something, something terrible like that. Or like bacon. No. You want burgers, get all the fat going, get it sizzling. That's my tips. Excellent, Declan. Uh, have an oven on standby at a low heat, <laughs> then you can do the fatty yeah. stuff. Especially like when there's a lot. When we have barbecues around mine, there's quite a lot of us, and there's a it's lot. It's good of food to start to, chicken off because chicken's a bit. There's a lot of food to, cook to on have on. Um, so it's good to have like yeah, and especially like with chicken, just to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Um, just having a, an oven on low heat that you can put everything yeah, exactly. into while other sh- shit's cooking is uh, is always a good idea. That's good. Uh, now that is what I would call top tips. But from the perspective of a four hundred million pound, I mean, it's what you ask for. Chef, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd also argue that the person who interviewed Jamie Oliver thought, "Can we have some top tips, Jamie, about uh, about your barbecue cooking skills?" These are his top tips. Number one, use the right fuel. Petrol. Petrol. <laughs> Diesel. Yeah. Jinx. Number two, wait for the right moment to cook. In some perspective, full moon. Sort of full moon. You, you need to wait for the flame to die. <laughs> yeah. Um Make sure the temperature is hot enough. Use yeah. tools. Uh, <laughs> drill. Screwdriver. Make your own burgers. You do. To be fair, Dick, you do. You do. Yeah, I'll make. He had to say that. Slaughter your own chef. cow. <laughs> fish. What? Fit is in. Go out and fish. It says fish, mate. He means cook fish. <laughs> you never do fish. No, but it's wrong. It's kayaking. Why is kayaking? Um, marinade. 
don't. I do like a good marinade. I like to a be marinade. fair. Yeah, I'll give him that. Let's just don't... give him any meat flavour. The instructions aren't no, clear no, though, no, is no, it? No, no, don't. If ruin... I turn up to Dex Barbecue just covered in barbecue sauce, <laughs> and I told him I sat in the bath for twenty four hours. <laughs> Marinading. Like, I said, J- Jamie Oliver said marinade, mate. Yeah. So I did. Oh, don't God. ruin the vegetables. I don't know if that's a tip or just like a just a, a, a generic thing. Just like, don't just, mess up. Yeah, just, just don't go wrong. Yeah. Um, this one is this one's brilliant. Um, get the sides right. A big pun. It just said get the sides right. I assume it means get the sides oh. of the um of the barbecue, the heat at the sides of the barbecue. On, on, I mean, I assume it means side dishes. Side dishes. Like coleslaw and potato salad, couscous. Mm. That makes an awful lot of sense. Yeah. Hummus. <laughs> it I, does, I was thinking yeah. the sides of the barbecue. No. Oh god. That would be a good tip though. The sides of the barbecue always are cooler. On the so side. You don't want to put things at the side. You're not going to cook for as long. Cook. You need to cook them longer. That's what I meant. So that's that's Jamie. That's the naked chef, Jamie Oliver. That's his. Uh, that's his top tips for our. I feel ready now. Yeah. So obviously there's I more. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know exactly what you're doing now. So barbecues <laughs> and picnics are um are all going better. We're we're leaving lockdown, so we're going to invest so, more. Hang on. I'm just I'm just working this out in my head. So I'm I marinade. Yeah. The veg. The veg. I impale it With a fish. on screwdriver <laughs> or drill. Yeah. A drill. And then, then you, I put on the side of the barbecue. Then you can spin yeah. it. While you're fishing. While I'm fishing. Yeah. Obviously, mm. obviously you've got to be yeah. fishing yeah. with the boys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got to make, make sure, sure you marinate. Right, so. You've got to make sure you have your barbecue sauce bath 24 hours before. Do you marinate, do you marinate the, the tools? Sometimes it gives a little bit of extra flavour. It does, yeah, yeah. You want like, um, like crude oil on your, on your, on your, like your screwdriver. Oh yeah, the fuel. I forgot about the right fuel. Yeah. Yeah. What other fuels even are there? Coal. Methane. That's yeah, probably a good one, isn't gas. it? Gas. Gas. Yeah. yeah. Sorted, mate. I've solved it. Hey. Yeah. When can I give my nana a hug? You are. When can I give my nana a hug? Whenever, mate. But it might be a uh, hug goodbye. <laughs> Jesus. It's up to you, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like that should just end on that, but I actually don't have another point, but I want to just finish there. Um, because surely when she's vaccinated and I'm vaccinated, we could give each other a hug, but if I've still got to keep my distance like a year from now, then no. Yeah, but I think social. I think the social distancing was referencing... You'd assume it was referencing, like, yeah, big social... Like when you go shop and all that, but, like, around people you know... In a year, I assume we can just do what we want, right? right. Yeah. yeah, hopefully so. Cause I it, think that's the ideal scenario, is when you're with your friends and your family and stuff, you just act normal. Mm. But then when you're out and about in a very, very public area with a lot of strangers and stuff, we just be a little bit more conscious I, than it, we were. Because we were filth. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are absolute animals. I, I think it will literally just be very packed public spaces, like public transport or maybe even nightclubs, stuff like that. I think, other than that, you'll be all right. No need for Wedding it. festival. Reading, yeah, yeah, that's outside, then it? it's fine. Okay, fine, fine. So, no worries, mate. And sixteen-year-olds can't get it, so actually, yeah, 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 no fine. problems. Yeah. True. Um, so I went further into my deep dive of the internet. Saw that there's a petition that where they want to ban mask wearing in schools. And I thought, interesting, interesting. So I had a little look. Ban up, it. Ban it. Not even just like make it optional. They like ban, ban it. Ban it. Yeah. No one should be allowed to wear a mask yeah, in just, school. Yeah. Ban it. Jeez. So I thought, That's oh, we'll have a look at what other petitions are on, are going about. And you go on the, like, the official petition website where it goes to Parliament and stuff like that. And there are a couple that weren't yet being discussed in Parliament that I sort of liked the uh, liked the look of. One here, which has got 12,000 votes as of about 12 o'clock yesterday. And it was allow wild camping in the UK. But this is really high. This was one of the highest ones on the on the whole website, actually, to allow wild camping. Um, do you know why we can't do wild camping? I know that it isn't trespassing. I was I was going to start spitting some absolute lies, but you know natural answer, so you probably go. <laughs> so, um, currently, legislation just says that like mostly they focus on groups that are like gypsies and travellers and other stuff that are like that you have to put your car around and stuff wherever you want, and that that's fine because that's like a cultural group. But at the moment, we don't have a um, there's a law against where you pitch your tent, tarp, or hammock uh, because the land will probably probably in in speech marks belong to someone so the moment but, tre- but trespassing isn't illegal in the no. uk so wait so there's something called it's called rambler's rights or something like that where you can walk wherever you 
whether, yeah, it's, yeah. whether it's across a field or something like that like it's, it's the right of way for ramblers you can do whatever whatever you please because most of the time the land will be owned by a charity the the crown or the government so well, you can you can walk yeah. across like fields and stuff like that however you can't pitch your tent there for the fact that it is ran by a charity the crown or the government so their well, argument is why can I walk along it but I can't sleep there the night that was actually going to be my point, and it turns out I was right. I was going to say that like a lot of people talk about wild camping, but it's not actually wild camping. A lot of like there's not much actual wild area in the UK. No, no it's all, we don't have much land. It's, and it's all been governed. divided. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't really it's not a thing you can do. Is why. But I suppose the people who who say this is that like if they're walking through the Peak District and they're walking for days, they just want to be able to put their tent there without having to go to like a like a campsite. So do you think they should be able to do that? Because because I know it is Maybe. technically someone's land, but also it is just like it's the Queen's land. It's not like she's gone. John's pitched up his tent again, like in in the Peak District. I better like go and. I sort think that out. in in an ideal world, yes. But I also think people are scum, and you'd probably just get like litter and just I don't know. Just imagine just loads of tents just littered around the Lake District everyone's mm. just drinking a bit drunk there's litter everywhere it just doesn't sound nice does it but do you think that people would do that? because typically if you go to a campsite the people who go camping are more likely to look after the, the environment and the, and the land around them right the thing I don't get is maybe that there are actual campsites why would you want to go wild camping because you've got all the amenities that campsites anyway you've got like toilets and things like that you've got bins why would you not just go camping what's i think that's more of appeal to some people isn't it the idea that like they're just going to string a hammock up between yeah, two they're idiots two trees. well maybe maybe they are idiots but i think that's the appeal to some people that like it, it feels I think it's a weird thing to get hung up on Twelve thousand of them have done it mate hammock joke yeah and i think that like realistically um you you could just if you just if you went to like new forest and you just walked far into it, away from paths. You could just count. No one's actually no, going to come up to you and be like, "Come on, mate, move a lot." Like, my friend from uni lives like on the edge of Forrester Dean. Him and his mates always used to just walk in and just sleep. No one would ever tell him to like. No one's actually in the, the middle of the night just walking around the forest looking for people who are asleep. No one cares. No, no, you're right. No, if he was, um, if he was asked to leave by. Um, by someone who owns the land, for example, and you didn't, then you're then causing an aggravated trespass in which you, you can't be arrested by a police officer. I don't think that. Oh no, but you can't be charged. I don't know. What, I don't know. You can't be charged. Oh, really? It's not. It's not illegal to I, trespass I, in the UK. Oh. I think if you refuse to move on, though, surely it is. Um, no, it's only illegal if you're on the Queen's land. Yes, but so, so some of the like the Peter stuff isn't that owned by the Crown. You can be arrested, but you can't be prosecuted. Right, okay. So, okay. I think that's fair enough, though, right? Yeah. Oh, cause all if the, you've been asked to move the, on and you go, nah, mate. Yeah. It's like, you can't just be like, oh, well, you've won then. Yeah, all the police enough. do is remove you and put you somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. In a jail cell. The thing that annoys me is, how many of them do you think would actually go wild camping? Because I bet it's not that not many. 12, I bet they just... People just love to just sign petitions for things. They just love it. I almost they did. Get so, they're like, yeah, people should have the right to wild camp. Yeah. I reckon about 20 of them would. So I'd have a little look at what else is, uh, is getting signed, what other petitions are getting signed. And people, there's 11,064 votes at 12 yesterday to fund a national anti-littering campaign. Right. So... When you just drive around Britain and stuff like that, there is a lot of litter around, especially at the moment when, like... I imagine Birmingham. the reason this has got a lot of talk about it is because recently, when you've been allowed in public places, the litter is, is so bad. So bad. Genuinely, that sounded like a joke, but when we went to Birmingham years ago to see Imagine Dragons, mm. the second we got into Birmingham, there was litter everywhere. Litter everywhere. everywhere. It is awful, but do you think that, that funding a national campaign about it, did you think that would do anything like we already know no. that we're not meant to litter i absolutely do not think it would do anything at all no. we know we're not meant to litter i hate litter i can't stand it you know when we went to red and we all just despised the fact that people were scum yeah mm. but i don't know what you could do about it no, I don't. No, people are just scum when we go this time i'm gonna start shouting at people you'll be shouting at everyone yeah. exactly literally everyone I'll 
It was just disgusting. We'd walk through campsites and people are just sat. They're like their chair is li- was literally just surrounded oh, yeah. by litter. Like, they were just yeah. sat in their own filth. There's bins everywhere. I don't get it. What were they doing? We we took everything to the bin. We even put my two broken camp chairs in the bin. May maybe people need to have a bin like right next to them, or they haven't the intelligence to walk over to it. But I'm sure some of them have like black bin bags. I think they just don't they care. They just chuck them on the floor as well. That's what, when you leave Reading, you hear on the news like there was only three percent of waste this year. I was like, didn't look like it when I was there. I had to traips. I was right. like paddling. Can, imagine what a hundred percent would have been like. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a genuine Very thing, though, that, like, I know people say, oh, the young people... Apparently, young people are more conscious of the planet. White Camp was quite clean, and that's where the older people were. Yeah, good point. Yeah. That's a very good point, actually. And, and, and literally, that that's... Everyone, the irony of everyone watching the 1975 doing their, their song about saving the planet with Greta Thunberg, <laughs> and everyone's just like... That was a very uniting moment in that moment when you're watching the 1975 you think we're all united in saving yeah. the planet right yeah it felt like that at the time yeah? she says it's time to rebel and everyone was like oh my god this is amazing yeah exactly yeah. and matty just like puts his arms out and he just like he's just reveling in it and he's just loving it and he's like i've united the young people and then the place just a shit oh absolutely trash planets destroyed <laughs> no one actually cares yeah maybe, maybe matty triggered it Maybe those who didn't that's like just, the That's just, just so. Someone needs to make Matt Healy walk around Reading Festival on a, on a Monday morning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just go. Let's get Greta down. Yeah. Have a look at this. Have a look at this, Greta. <laughs> this is disgusting, mate. Look at the state of these youngsters, yeah, who you think are on your side. <laughs> it, all these people, yeah, you think are on your side. You think the government's problem. Everyone is, mate. It's you against yeah. the world, Greta. That'll cheer up. <laughs> The, the, not a lot of people get fined for um, for littering, and I think it's, it's meant to be illegal. But I think that they should they should they should find more. They were down in Britain. They were discussing the fact that like, there should there be like a whistleblowing thing where you get paid to basically dob someone in if they've littered. I've and said this like, before. How much did you get paid though? It was, like, it was for like fifty quid. The fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've said this before. We need to start cutting off hands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or, like, well, you mate, actually, right. no. Don't don't do it as severe. You should, what you should do is you, you finger lose a finger time. first. Yeah. Lose a finger, and then like you know. It's like reverse hangman. Yeah, you got ten chances to litter, but but, but when we when we've done all ten fingers, you just lose both arms automatically. I think that would work. It, reverse hangman. You litter once, finger, and then you go through all ten fingers, and then we take your hands. Yeah. Not that I there, would there'd be any use after the fingers are gone. That we wouldn't have a single student in school who had who had arms. <laughs> it would really it would really make education difficult. Yeah, because no one yeah. would have any appendages. Uh, or, no, they've got dictation mode it now. Would just make the world cleaner. Yeah, oh, it would be cleaner because no one's got any arms. No one can no. throw anything anywhere. No one can chuck anything now. Oh, yeah. yeah, no one can do anything. We all just we all just die. So, what are we drinking today, then, gentlemen? Declan, I'm drinking wine. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, today I'm drinking uh, Kumala. Uh, it's actually from Co-op. Na- uh, Mason, Mason brought me it for Easter. Um, <clears throat> it says uh, we're Kamala and we're South African. Cheers. Um, a proud nation that's all about variety. If variety is the spice of life, we've grabbed the whole rack and squeezed every last drop into our ride of wine, which is very sexual. It's quite sexual. Um, Store in a cool dark place. Um, I blend. I blended this before um, I started drinking it. The bottle. It was, just, it was just grapes in a bottle, wasn't it? Yeah, I like the taste of glass. Um, just make your own wine. It it aerates the the wine. I've, TikTok, TikTok told me. Um, <coughs> <laughs> the only useful thing I've learned from it, um, and it does yeah, actually work. There's a bunch work. of thirteen year olds on TikTok. What are they blending wine for? It, it does actually work. If you blend a really cheap wine, it tastes expensive. What if I blend my beer? Wow. I don't know. They don't say anything about it. Beer's flat, fizzy, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go on, Alf. Uh, we have uh, Belgian Session. I don't yeah. know how to say it. Session. 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 Doesn't sound very Belgian, no, does it? it? No. <laughs> um, it, honestly, there's not a lot of information on this can. There isn't. 
at all. And it's rather annoying because I don't know what that flavour is. It says 5.5%. Um, I assumed it was a session. Oh, I did. A bit 5.5%. Don't think it is, mate. No, I don't. I think I've mispronounced say so. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a session. It tastes like... Yeah, no idea what it is. I don't know what it tastes like. I do. I'll tell you at the end. Okay. Oh, I forgot to say, mine's a um, a Pintanel Shiraz. Oh. I'll talk about it later. Ours is five and a half percent. Nice. Mine's twelve and a half. So my <laughs> <laughs> so my third deep dive was I found another article and it said this is this made the news this week. This made the news. Four in ten Brits. It's not that that impressive. Four in ten. Four in ten Brits said that mashed potato should replace roast potatoes on Sunday lunch. Why not both? Why, why was this a question? It's, it's not like they you have authority over me. It's, are they? it's oh, not no. a law that you have to have one or the other. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. No. Do a little bit of mashed potatoes it's, it's, and some roast. But if you had to choose, why one. isn't it four out of why isn't it four out of ten Brits? Prefer mashed potato to roast. Why have they had to make it sound like they're going to do an uprising and make it law? Yes. Why is it four and ten made to sound impressive when clearly that's not the majority? <laughs> anyway, close. Do you? Do, do either you, do you? Would you? Would you? Would you like that? I like mashed roast potatoes. What's that kind of? <laughs> you're you're in. It, 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 there's, there's a hidden thing. Uh, it is it one is in it, ten likes roasted mashed. Does it count as mashed potatoes if your mum chews them and then like feeds you like a bird? <laughs> is that mashed potato? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, I like mashed roast potatoes. Though. Okay. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Fair enough. Deck, if you, would you replace roast potatoes with mashed potatoes? I don't think I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Roast I potatoes are way better. Yeah, than roast mashed. potatoes way, way better than mashed. Way better. They're, 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 roast, good roast potatoes are mashed potato. In a nice crispy shell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very good point. Yeah, yeah. It's nice and black outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I thought that's what what good roast potatoes should be. I was quite shocked by the statistic. I thought this this is absolutely ridiculous. This is this is this is rubbish. So I then took to Google to find the definitive list of how people eat their potatoes, and I found the top article said the fifteen best ways to eat potatoes. I thought the fifteen best way. It wasn't actually fifteen. It was twenty best ways. Sorry. So I went through like the, the bottom five. a lot five. of ways. Yeah, exactly. I went through the bottom five, though. I didn't really take notice of any of them. Number 17 was potato soup. Uh, number 15 Ew. was jacket potato, which absolutely made me really angry. Because I thought... Why? Because I, there's 14 potatoes in front of jacket potato. I don't like jacket yeah, potato, I, though. I love jacket potato. I like jacket potato. Jacket potato, tuna nice, and mate. cheese, or chilli and cheese. Love it. I was just shocked at 14. I love it. I missed out 4, 3, 2, or 4, 14, 13, 12, 11. And I got to the top 10. The list shocked me. Number 10 is crisps. <laughs> oh, number 10? Number 10's crisps. Wrong. That's number one, mate. No, number nine was hash browns. Yeah, but you don't like potato crisps, do you? You like veg crisps. He likes veg crisps, to be fair. Shut up. <laughs> potato- no, I like all crisps. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah, number nine, hash browns. Number eight, latkes. Yeah. Latkes? You know, I look like a beef. Lactate probably. is what... Cows do. And yes, it well, is, yeah. most females. Look like a beef burger. I don't know. Skip past it. Number seven, skins. Potato skins. Yeah. They're a bit. They're not great. Are they? Yeah, I like them. I don't think they should be number seven. I'd, I'd argue list. they're the worst part. You wouldn't have them above crisps. You'd have them above jackets. I argue. No. Number six, tater tots. Oh yeah, yeah. Five, right. Noki, Gnocchi. N- I like Noki. Is Noki potato? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it? I don't know what it is, Dick. But you wouldn't like... Have you had Noki? No, because I don't know the other four of it. But you wouldn't... What's, what's wrong with Dick, then? You keep calling it Noki. I think it is It's Noki. called Noki. Nochi. Noki. Gnocchi. Like, you know that... Like, it's it's like Italian, Nikki. isn't it? They love their hard Ks. <laughs> Noki. Noki. It's like a dumpling, isn't it? Yeah. yeah anyway, that's number five. Number four... When you think potato, you don't think that. That's all no, I'm saying. It's like, it, people, I'm not saying it ain't potato. I'm just saying when you think top potato things, you don't think smiley I think, I think Some that people better than? think of it like yeah. pasta as well, don't they? You are? Some people class it as pasta. It is like it, a yeah, pasta. It is it's like pasta. a dumpling pasta yeah. thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Salt ravioli, isn't it? Yeah, 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 actually, yeah. So number four, roast potatoes. Number four. What is what is the top three? Oh mate, you mean mash in there? Number three, potato French smileys. Potato smileys. Mm. No, they weren't on the list. Oh yeah, French fries. French fries. French fries number yeah. two, pot- to be fair, you can't. You, yeah. Potato patatas bravas. You are. Patatas what? bravas. Um, As number two. Yeah, it is like in it's the like list. spicy aioli sauce um, on top of your roast potatoes. In- it's just roast potatoes with some sauce on it. Is, Ma- yeah. It's just they're they're made Who into wrote squares. This list? I'll get to that in a bit. C- is it Jamie Oliver. Oh. <laughs> Patatas <laughs> bravas <laughs> means spicy potatoes. Yeah, what? literally. Yeah. And then no, number one. But hang on, no, hang on. I don't like this because patatas bravas has sauce on and the others haven't. That's cheating. Mm. That is cheating. I That's agree. That's true. Because without sauce, it 100%. would just be roast potato. It would just be so a square really? roast potato. Roast potatoes Which number is two. on the list. Yeah. But number yeah. one, mashed potatoes. No, it's just wrong. Wrong. So I thought this man, I, I can't trust this man. So I had a little look at who this man was. His name was Joe Jamie Satran. Oliver. No, it wasn't Jamie yeah. Oliver. That would, be, that would be amazing. It was. His name is Joe Satran. He works for the Huffington Post. And I thought oh. Joe Sugg. Not Joe Sugg. I thought I'll have to have a look at this bloke. See what he's like. I, I'll check him out on Twitter. So I found some of his recent tweets. It was moaning about that, um, that on in the Marvel films they pronounce um, Lagos as Lagos. The um, the city oh. in is it Nigeria? Yeah, 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 yeah. Lagos. Yeah, uh, Lagos is, is is the word. Apparently. It is in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, and then a note is second from that tweet was it's so great to be able to breathe for the first time in four years. I was, I was wondering why why he couldn't. There was no explanation. I, I was wondering Hold why he breath. couldn't breathe for the World first time in four years. He's, that's a hell of a record. That Jill's. Uh, I think this was Jill Biden. A uh, black floral print dress is an iconic fashion moment. And I thought, an iconic fashion moment? We'll remember that in, in 50 years. So I wondered what iconic really meant. And that, the first that lady me. wears a dress. Yeah, and that puzzled me for a little while. But then I then I took a deep dive on his on the articles he's written on the Huffington Post and I found out really what iconic meant. So he's he's looked, he's, all the articles he's written, they're all to do with um, cocktails and, and different things like that. And I thought, well, maybe he does have a little say on food then. And then this man, they trusted him in 2018 with writing the the article that went on the front page of the Huffington Post, and this was about Stephen Hawking's death. I thought, oh, I don't know why you trust the man who writes about cocktails and, and mashed potato as the man who should write up about um about Stephen Hawking's death. And he titled it as um he well he said uh, Stephen Hawking has died at the age of so and so, the most iconic physicist of all time. Um, and I thought. Yeah, of all time. I thought all the all the things all the things that he's done in his, in his in his life. I thought naming him iconic on the Huffington Post after his death. I think that's probably like wasn't you know, Stephen Hawking's wheelchair more famous than he was. He's he's an iconic physicist. Though, to seem... be fair. He ain't the yeah, most. But I thought maybe I think he's number could... three. Who's, who's one and two? You tell me, mate. Newton. Einstein, yeah. Newton. Einstein, yeah. Newton. There you go. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Do you disagree? So I thought he, he's... Name another physicist. No, no, I didn't disagree. Mary Curie. He's number three then, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, this is this is strange. So I'm going to have a little look at what iconic means. So I went to a page that was the 128 most iconic people. Give me three. Barack, uh, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. That's a little look. Let me, let me just wait for the page to load. <laughs> iconic people. Give me a second. So we're just talking like I the most famous people. people of all are, time. Are they alive or dead? Barack Obama, Declan, was number 39. Michael Jackson. Number 71. He's, he... I'm what winning. Do? Elvis Presley? Are we, we? Are these alive or like... Yeah, well, they could be, some, of them, some of them could well be. Some of them could yeah, they could have been written in 2008. Um, uh, no, so, so, yeah, some of, these, some of these are alive. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Some of these are alive. Uh, number, wait, 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 Elvis Presley, number 15. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Number one. She's the most iconic person ding, ever. Ding, 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 ding. Yep. You're telling me she's the this most iconic off, person like of all time. Online. Yep. Do you want to know the top what ten? A load of so absolute rubbish. Number one, Marilyn Monroe. Abraham Lincoln. Nelson Mandela. Jason Bateman. John F. Kennedy. Gandhi. No. <laughs> Gandhi. Um, yeah, John Man. F. Kennedy. Jonah Hill. Hang on. Did you just say Jonah Hill? Just, just to, uh, oh, I just, I mate, just, I was I about to drive to March and fight you. 
That would be funny, though. Yeah, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Queen Elizabeth II, Winston Churchill, Donald Trump, Bill Gates, and Muhammad Ali. Say Jeff King. Gandhi's not on there. Gandhi's not on there. Do you want me to find out where Gandhi is for you? He's not. I just think. Well, actually, um, yeah, Matt, sorry, Mahatma Gandhi's number 11. Oh. You, you, you can't put Trump on there just because it's now, though, right? Yeah, to be fair, they'll probably... Surely the point like of iconic is, like, everlasting. Mm. Yeah, but he was, the worst, he was is... the worst president in US history. There's not many alive people on this list, I'll be honest. There's Queen Elizabeth II, Donald Trump, Bill Gates, Paul McCartney. Why is on Bill, like, Bill Gates? Um, what, why? Greta. Greta. Greta's on there. Greta what? Thunberg. That's yeah. yeah. The thing is, again, Madonna. though, do, uh, is Greta going to be remembered in 100 years? Malala. Who, no, no, no. She's no, not iconic, no, is she? No. Messy. No. It depends what she does from she's now, but if she it. just, if this is it, if this is all she's done, she ain't going to be remembered in 100 years. Yeah. Bob Geldof's on it, and they've put charity worker, and then comma, Irish musician. It, sh- it showed that the boom town rat- rats weren't that big, that it was the Irish what, musician. What about... I don't know if they put Bono, Irish musician. What about musician. Freddie Mercury? No, mate. What? Not iconic. Gre- 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 Greta's on there, but Freddie Mercury isn't. Are you serious? Wrong. Yes, mate. Yep. Yep. So, so yeah, I thought that that's that's a list then of iconic people. So I thought I'd Google just the word iconic things, and I looked at the four, the first four pictures that came up. So the first one was Chanel, second Marmite, the third Mickey Mouse. I thought they are quite iconic things. Fair enough. Then the fourth was a painting. Of a of a woman with nothing on, just some this like, like white knickers, with a man like a jester who was holding onto her. I thought iconic, so I clicked on the picture, and it came up with an article that said ten of the ten of history's most iconic things that never existed. I thought all right, and number nine was the chastity belt. Weren't a thing. Weren't I mean, thing. That's, I, I'll be honest, that is very believable that that wasn't a thing. So apparently in the 16th century, it was written down as um, as this like secret weapon for for people to give to their daughters and their wives when they went on long trips away. Um, but it was like a joke. It was like something they would, would joke about. And then it got to like the uh, 18th and 19th century, and people would make them and they'd put them in shows and stuff like that. And it was more like a prop to act out act out things about history and stuff like that. And the British Museum actually confirmed that their chastity belt. Is um is a fake, hmm. but like, wouldn't you argue that? Yeah, it's a bit of history, though, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you just mean it wasn't it just, used. It wasn't ever used, yeah. actually. For yeah, yeah. yeah it just wasn't it's used. a bit like gravity, isn't it? Gravity mm. didn't exist until Isaac Newton founded it. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What would you want? No, let me remember. What would I want? What's something that you wish has never existed? What would I wish had never been existed? Yeah, what is something you wish never existed? Had never been existed? Yeah. Had never existed. Oh, I can't say that. Um, it's a hard question to just chuck at someone, isn't it? Yeah. To be fair. Bad it's drivers. A tricky one to... Uh, That's good. Pigeons. Rats of the sky, aren't they? Except I like rats. Well, that was my deep dive on the internet, gentlemen. Things I wished never existed. Just just going down holes and just looking at... Uh, how was your wine deck? I don't really like Shiraz. But this is all right. You, I, I do. I go admit you've got to blend it. But um, yeah, go go have a look at Kamal. Uh, it's 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 also fair trade, um, as most car products are. Um, yeah, go get it. Give it a blend. Give it a try. Nice. Have, my beer or Dex yeah. wine? No, your beer. Uh, it's all right. I didn't really like it very I much. Was, I, I thought it was fine. It tasted like, um, I don't know, it tasted a bit like a wheat beer, I thought. It's quite wheaty. Yeah, I think I think that's what I'm what I'm getting from it. It tastes, it's got a very distinctive taste. But I just Whereas I was, expression, I, was expe- expression? I was expecting a session IPA. I think it's quite wheat beery. Yeah, and it, exactly. And it wasn't at all session IPA. It might well be a wheat beer. The thing is, if it said on here, wheat beer, I'd try and go... That's a wheat beer. There's no wheat in the ingredients, either, which is slightly probably weird. not a wheat beer then. No, I just looked at that. Yeah. To be fair, I've no idea what this is. I'm googling it. I've googled it. A saison. It? A saison. Saison. It's just. Yeah. A, it's a type of beer. Saison? It's a pale ale that's highly carbonated, okay. fruity, spicy, and often bottled. I think. 
Historically brewed with low alcohol levels. 5.5. 5. 5.5%. 5. And also, next week, Alfie, what are you, uh, what's your podcast going to be on? Comes around quick, doesn't it? It does come around quick. I ain't got a bloody clue, mate. Absolutely no idea. All right, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. I hope this might encourage you to do a deep dive on the internet, see what you can find, especially about barbecues and potatoes, because it's actually wonderful. Go sign some petitions as well. Uh, yeah. Check out our Instagram and stuff. Give us some likes if you want, or give us some follows. Looks like that'd be sick. Uh, thank you Bye. very much. See you next week. Love you. Welcome to Guzzler.